Hi, Joe Alton, MD here, also known as Dr. Bones of the survival website doomandbloom.net, co-author of the Book Excellence Award-winning fourth edition of the Survival Medicine Handbook and designer of quality medical kits at store.doomandbloom.net. Infectious diseases are a problem in every part of the world, and a common and deadly example is malaria. We're all too young to remember, but malaria was once a major medical issue in the southern United States. In fact, a 1933 survey found up that up to 30% of local populations in the Tennessee River Valley were affected. The disease was also common in World War II war zones in the Pacific. In fact, malaria became such a concern that in 1946, the CDC, back then it was known as the Communicable Disease Center, was established primarily to combat that one disease. Now you know it stands for Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. The CDC in 13 southern states instituted the National Malaria Eradication Program in 1947. By the end of 1949, close to 5 million homes were sprayed with insecticide. This had an immediate effect. In 1947, 15,000 new cases were reported. The next year, it was down to 2,000. By the end of the year after that, malaria was considered eradicated in the United States, a public health miracle. In recent weeks, a number of cases of malaria have been reported in Florida's Sarasota County, and also one in Cameron County, Texas. They represent the first documented cases of local U.S. transmission in 20 years. Now, that doesn't mean that Americans can't get malaria abroad. In 2018, close to 1,800 cases of travel-related malaria were identified in returning travelers to the U.S. This is just a drop in the bucket compared to the damage done yearly by malaria worldwide. The CDC reports that in 2020, an estimated 247 million, that's million cases, were diagnosed with 619,000 deaths, mostly in sub-Saharan Africa. So what causes malaria? Malaria is a disease caused by a parasite in the genus Plasmodium. Several types can cause the disease, but Plasmodium falciparum is most likely to cause severe infections. Malaria is usually transmitted by a bite from a specific species of mosquito that carries a parasite, known as Anopheles. Only the females bite, and they must have previously taken a blood meal from an infected person. The organism lives in the saliva of the mosquito and is injected into each future victim during a bite. Once in the body, the malaria parasite lives in red blood cells, leaving open a number of ways in which the disease can be spread. Blood transfusions, needle sharing, organ transplants, and even from mother to fetus. Other than these specific avenues, malaria is not considered contagious from person to person, though. It isn't airborne like colds, flus, or COVID, nor is it a common thing to pass along by sexual contact. It's important to be able to recognize the signs and symptoms of malaria, just as it's important to diagnose any disease early in the process. Expect to see symptoms begin about 10 days after an infected mosquito bite. In some cases, however, symptoms may be delayed up to a year. This is because Plasmodium falciparum can remain dormant in the liver for a time. Once it invades the red blood cells, you're going to get physically ill, and you'll notice it. There'll be a cycle of inactivity followed by active phases known as relapses. Relapses tend to worsen over time, may be separated by weeks, months, or even years. Symptoms of malaria include fever and chills, headache, muscle aches, fatigue, nausea and vomiting, diarrhea, and even confusion or altered mental status. The organism that causes malaria sometimes destroys so many red blood cells that anemia ensues. In some cases, skin and eyes even turn yellow. That's called jaundice. If ignored, the end result could be organ failure, seizures, coma, and even death. Diagnosis, by the way, isn't difficult if you have a microscope. The plasmodium parasites can be identified easily in a drop of blood. So why malaria and why now? The conventional wisdom put forth by many experts points to warmer temperatures caused by climate change. Hotter weather and increased rainfall indeed could lead to a wider spread of malaria and other tropical diseases. Mosquitoes breed best in the heat as long as there's a water source to lay eggs and are rendered inactive by cold. Others suggest that the recent cases which seem to have been caused by a type of plasmodium that makes less severe symptoms may not have been recognized as being signs of malaria by the victims until they had a relapse. Perhaps the malaria cases in Texas and Florida may have been discovered because COVID-19 has raised people's awareness regarding flu-like illnesses. Those who are feeling sick may be more likely to present maybe to their medical provider, only to find they have malaria instead of COVID. 
An alternate hypothesis you won't hear about is the possibility that immigrants crossing the border, many of whom came from countries where malaria is common, might be carrying the parasite. There are hundreds of millions of people who have had malaria, and if these carriers of the organism get bitten by mosquitoes after they arrive in the United States, the now infected mosquitoes can transmit the disease locally. The CDC considers any case of malaria to be a medical emergency which must be treated immediately. Members of the quinine and chloroquine family, including, yes, hydroxychloroquine, are used unless there is a known resistance to the drugs. Quinine sulfate, in addition to doxycycline, 100 milligrams, is an option in cases that were acquired in areas where chloroquine resistance is common. Now, if you can't help but travel in regions where Anopheles mosquitoes live, you might consider taking medicine like doxycycline 100 milligrams that offers protections against plasmodium organisms. Begin the course of treatment a few days before and both during and for a week after your trip. In future videos, we'll discuss how to avoid mosquito bites in general and the various diseases they cause. This is Joe Alton, MD, that old Dr. Bones, wishing you the best of health and good times or bad. Thanks for watching. Hey, learn more about awkward medical topics in the fourth edition of the Survival Medicine Handbook and get your family medically prepared with quality kits and individual supplies from our entire line at store.doomandbloom.net. You'll be glad you did.